Welcome to World Prophecy News. I'm Jay Gallimore. And I'm Steve Gallimore. Recently, Australia's richest man passed away. He was worth $5.1 billion. Most of his money came from the casinos that he owned. His name was Kerry Packer, and he gained his wealth by operating casinos. Now, casinos usually make their, their money because everything there is rigged against the person that is gambling. Well, gambling is a growing worldwide problem. It is growing uh, not only in the U.S., but in various places around the world. In fact, if you go to Korea, recently there was a lady that jumped out of a hotel window. She had lost $100 million. Well, she had won that gambling at the casino, but then she lost the $100 million, and so she ended her life by jumping out of the window of the casino. And Jay, you know, this is just a, a growing problem around the world. This lady was really addicted to gambling. She went there 196 times a year. Mm -hmm. So yeah. she was there almost constantly gambling. And, you know, she made a lot and then she lost a lot. Well, the nature of gambling, of course, is that those businesses are businesses and businesses are in business to make money. Right. And that means that when you walk in the door, you're going to lose. Yeah, uh, the truth is that it's really a loser's game, and people like, there are a lot of people that like to, in recreation, they call it recreation, they just like to lose, Steve. I never enjoyed losing money, but it uh, seems like that a lot of people do. But it has tragic consequences. Uh, not long ago, there was a, a young president of his class at Lehigh University in Pennsylvania, and he got into gambling. I think it was online gambling, and he needed $3,000 to cover his bets. So instead of asking his parents or going and trying to borrow the money, he decided to rob a bank. Now people say, well, that's no excuse for robbing a bank. That's true, but it demonstrates the kind of desperation that people will, will see. And what they don't tell you about the casinos is they don't tell you about all the sorrow and the heartache and many churches having to pick up the pieces of people's lives that have been just absolutely destroyed by this uh, gambling thing. And the, Steve, the unhappy thing about this thing is that the states have gotten into gambling and they're pushing gambling. So we have laws against ga certain kinds of gambling and then you got the states into gambling. I think it's a sign of the times, surely it's a sign of the end of time as people are just focused on the pursuit of pleasure no matter what the cost. Well, Jay, there was a, a survey done by the Barna Group. You know, they do a lot of Christian research. And recently they did a survey to find out attitudes that Christian children had about gambling. What they found out was that Christian children, the children that were in a Christian home where their parents were Christian, had the same kind of attitude towards gambling, basically a positive attitude towards gambling, as did uh, children of non-Christian homes. Homes, which probably reflects the attitude of the parents towards gambling. There seems to be among Christians kind of a lax attitude about this whole issue of gambling, but it has so many social ills that are accompanying uh, or that go with that. And so I think when we talk about this whole issue of gambling, we've got to look not just at the issue that people lose money, because people do lose money. I mean, anyone that thinks that they walk in a casino and they're going to walk away rich, I mean, they're not thinking very clearly. And as I mentioned earlier, they're set up to lose. I mean, that's an issue. And there's an issue there about Christians and the use of their financial resources that the Lord has given to them. But beyond that, you also have many of the other social ills that go along with gambling. And there are so many of them, uh, all kinds of things, uh, family problems and alcoholism and so many things that go along with gambling. Yeah, it's, it just adds to the tragedy. Uh, one of the uh, uh, gambling devices are video lottery term terminals. They call them VLTs. They have been called the crack coke cocaine of gambling. Indeed, electronic gambling machines, EGMs they call them, may be the most addictive form of gambling that's been ever invented. And then they go on to tell us why. It says their colors, their lights, their sounds can drive normal gamblers to bet faster and faster until they become obsessed. It takes only a year to get hooked on these VLTs, while it takes almost four years to become addicted to other forms of gambling, such as horses, sports, and, uh, and blackjack. So th there you again, you see, they're, they're looking for ways to push people, Steve, as hard as they can, because like you said, it's a business from their standpoint. Well, Jay, there was a couple that hit the jackpot. They won $34 million and won these lottery jackpots. 
So they had one of these state gambling jackpots. They, they won a huge amount of money. Now, you would think that they would be live happily ever after, right? All this money, $34 million. $34 million. This is a couple that lived in kind of a ramshackled old house, and they didn't have a lot of money. They struggled through life, and now they all, all of a sudden, they had $34 million. And yes, you would think that life would have been pretty good for them. They should have been able to ease on into retirement, uh, live their life, and ease on into retirement and do quite well. But the fact of the matter is, and this so often happens with gambling, in fact, in the book of Proverbs, the wise man said that, that money easily gotten is soon lost. Mm -hmm. And so th I, this is a case in point of that. And what happened was that the man died of alcoholism. And I'm not naming them for a purpose. I don't want to give their names out. But, but he died after three years of alcoholism. So after mm. he got $34 million, he turned to the bottle, died of alcoholism. And just a, a short while after that, his wife also died. And she was suspected of taking an overdose of drugs. So their $34 million that they got out of gambling accomplished absolutely nothing. Now, we don't know how would their life have gone if they had not won the $34 million. We don't know. But certainly, uh, it did not bring happiness and joy to them. No. In fact, there's been some... Uh some studies made of people who've suddenly won all this money and all of a sudden to find out that maybe it didn't produce all the happiness that people thought it was would. Steve, I think it also uh, underlines the fact that happiness is not found in the external. Yes, everybody needs enough money. It's kind of like oxygen. You need enough to breathe, so to speak. But it's not money that brings happiness. It's the joy in our hearts and our lives that really brings happiness. And unfortunately, people are, are seeking happiness because they become convinced that money is the answer answer to everything and so they go take these huge risks in order to try uh, to get some of it. Uh, you cannot uh, ignore Proverbs. You, you mentioned that. Of course, one of the Ten Commandments is you shall not covet and, uh, and gambling, of course, should uh, could fit under that quite uh, honestly. Here's another couple of uh, Proverbs that I'd like to share with uh, you. It says, an inheritance, I think you mentioned this one, quickly gained at the beginning will not be blessed in the end. And he who loves money, this is one that's very interesting, he who loves money never has enough and is never satisfied with his income, Ecclesiastes tells us. Well, if that's the central focus of our life, then it's never enough. I, right. I mean, if that's your focus, how do you ever get enough? If, uh -huh. You know, it just it doesn't go together. Well, Jay, let's share with uh, people, I think this is really, really intriguing. Let, let's share the odds of winning at state lotteries. Now, you would think that maybe state lotteries would be better than some casinos uh, because supposedly they bring this money in and they turn it back uh, out, except for what they keep for, depending on the state education or whatever they, they claim that they use that for. Right. Uh, but the odds of winning at a state lottery vary. So it's not the same in every state, but it varies from 1 in 240,000. Now, that's, those odds are pretty bad. <laughs> They're uh, awful. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you had, had 240,000 pieces of paper laying in a pile and one of them was marked, what are your odds of going up there the first time and pulling that one out? Well, not a whole lot, but that's the, that's the law. I mean, that's the best that you can do. But they vary all the way up to 1 in 18 million. Now, think about drawing a piece of paper out of a pile and getting the right one. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it's almost impossible. I mean, why would you do that? Why would you put, what, put any money on those kinds of odds? I guess because they're always thinking, well, there's somebody in that 18 million. That's what drive, the greed drives this thing. Well, you know, I think your odds are better off of, of taking a $10 bill or whatever it might be and, and laying it out in a ditch somewhere and hoping that somebody will come along and lay another one on top of it. <laughs> uh, you yeah. know, the odds are just, it's not that they're just stacked against you. The odds are almost impossible. And when you see somebody win one of these, and it's true that somebody is going to come out of that pile and somebody will get the money. And then people say, oh, that could have been me if I had made that investment. Well, it's not an investment. You're simply taking your money and throwing it away. I wonder how long a line, uh, Steve, uh, 50 million people would make that it would take to, you know, to stand in line to see if you got one chance. That line would be a long ways. Well, there's one, and I'm not going to throw the name out here, but there's one of these uh, gambling things that, that covers a whole lot of states, and I'm not going to give the name of it. But the odds on that one, and this is one that many, many people play. I don't know the exact numbers. I'm assuming from what I've seen that probably more people play this one than any of the others. But the odds of winning at that one now increase 
The state lottery, the worst that you can do there is one in 18 million, but on this one, it increases one in 54 million. And a lot of people look at this national uh, gambling uh, that takes place in this particular event, and they say, oh, wow, look at all this money that people get, millions and millions of dollars. And they do, they give these huge payouts. But your odds of winning are one in 54 million. Wow. Uh, Steve, uh why, why are people motivated to gamble? I think one of the reasons is they think, well, you know, I won't have to work anymore. I can just take it easy and do, do nothing. But the scripture says that slothfulness uh, is not good for us. It warns us against being slothful. Slothful is another way of saying that you're just being lazy, laying around and doing nothing. So maybe that's why when people win a lot of money fast like that, they, they, uh, they get uh, unhappy. And a lot of people who have money, they're not slothful. They keep working even after they've got money because they find that there's happiness in work and being productive. Jay, 25% of the American population, 25% of the American population has a gambling habit. 25%, so one-fourth of the people in this country. Now, many more than that gamble, but 25%, uh, it is said that they have actually a habit of gambling. Well, that explains why when I go by those, or ride by those gambling places that uh, I, I go by in Michigan, it just about every time the uh, the parking lots are just full of people. And uh, so it's a, it's a huge spiritual problem. Well, you have to wonder how many of those people are Christians. How many people are in there participating in those kinds of activities that, that are Christians? Well, I, I think, uh, unfortunately, right. there's, there's way too many. Um, is the problem of gambling really the result of irresponsible or weak-willed people? And uh, one uh, professional answer to that says, no, many people who develop problems have been viewed as responsible and strong by those who care about them. Uh, so their participating factors often lead to a change in behavior, such as retirement of job-related stress. So in other words, uh, a lot of people who get involved in, in bad gambling are been viewed as very strong, responsible people, but somehow this gets a hold of them, Steve, and the next thing you know, their whole life is ruined by it. Well, it can be an addiction. Uh, some people have a habit. As I mentioned, 25% of the American population it says that they have a habit. But some people can actually be addicted to gambling, so it becomes an issue like alcoholism that becomes, you know, addiction is very interesting because it, be, it can start as an emotional type thing, an emotional right. addiction, and then it actually becomes a physiological addiction as well. There's, there's a strange connection there that can happen in the issue of addiction. So a lot of people actually get addicted to gambling, and so they need treatment, just like an alcoholic would need treatment to try to get past that. Yeah. Well, a lot of people say, well, it's not the gaming industry we don't make uh, problem gamblers, uh, that's their problem. But the fact is that, the, that they're pushing this, they're advertising on the billboards. I watch the billboards. Uh, they target those billboards. Uh, I know sometimes in Michigan they have certain uh, young people they target them to. Sometimes they target them towards uh, middle-aged housewives. And, uh, and the, the alluring of this thing is just huge. And, of course, the tragedies go right along with it. Well, it does. There, as we mentioned already, there are so many social uh, ills that accompany uh, gambling. Uh, let's, Jay, for just a minute, and, and our time is running out, but I'd like for us to consider just carefully uh, with those that are watching today, why a Christian should or should not gamble. Now, we've read some Bible texts, but right. let's reiterate some of those things. Okay. Why should a Christian say, I'm against gambling, I'm not for this type of industry? Well, I think one of the uh, things is that we shouldn't just be out to get something for nothing. In other words, to take something from somebody else uh, just for nothing. I think that runs against the whole concept of earning your own way. We have that. We also have the, the thing that uh, people that get involved in this, many of them uh, lose their families, they lose their homes. Uh, so it has a devastating effect on the family. Well, a Christian needs to be aware of that and say, this, this thing may destroy my family. That's right. The other thing is it's just driven by pure greed. This is not just having fun. People want money. And, and so when you have a greed-driven industry, it's going to have huge problems and implications to Christianity. There's just not going to be any casinos. Steve in the new earth and I couldn't see Jesus going in and playing blackjack at the local casino. I think you're right. Well for World Prophecy News I'm Steve Gallimore. Thanks for being with us today. And I'm Jay Gallimore.